singing. My voice is uh, trying to give out on me. I just thumb it into here and see if Fatty did more. She did a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you can thumb through. I mean, here's one. To the work. Uh, she's got so many of them in here. But she's probably the most prolific gospel songwriter in the last several hundred years. But that was Fanny Crosby. All right, now, what I'm going to do. Microphone. The microphone's not on. Well, I got it. Well, I'm not on. I'm going to have it on. All right. This is my first night back in about seven months. I have been, uh, hadn't been playing hooky. I've been, they just took me off of my uh, blood thinner. I was on that for a long time because uh, I had some blood clots on my lungs and uh, and I, they took me off the blood thinner last week. The blood clots dissolved. I'm tickled to death with that. Uh, what did I do with those? I had some up here. A bunch of, I've got a bunch of things I haven't read. And I was going to try to make up for a few of those tonight. There are emails I haven't read. And uh, I thought I had some others here. I probably do have. I don't know what I did with them. All right. Uh, let me see what I've got here. These are i got a bunch I have not read. I'll read some of them. These are people that write to us that are, uh, they watch us either on the Internet or they watch us on uh, the TV. We're on TV in about 250 different towns and cities. And, uh, and it's, a lot of them are long. That's why I didn't read them. Uh, Somebody got mad at me for saying Billy Graham didn't preach the gospel. And Hoagie918 says, uh, you're preaching the accursed false gospel of works. You can't add your works. You're turning from sins. You're taking up your cross. You're dying daily. What do you think a cross is for? It's crucified self so you can live right. Live right is works unto salvation, not works for salvation. It is salvation that works. Faith without works is the dead faith. We're his workmanship. I'm not going to read this person. They're silly. They don't know nothing about the truth. That was some guy named Hoagie918. You are ignorant, mister. And then I got an email from... Uh, I talked to Chris Earl this afternoon. He's going to be looking for a place to live. He's going to move here from Missouri, from Old Monroe, Missouri. And... Uh, He's saying, I was, it was good to see you back in the pulpit today. I've been praying for you and all my brothers and sisters daily. I miss all. It is such a joy to see you on the live Sunday broadcast. I'm excited to tell you I've been recently gotten the following books for my personal library. And he names a bunch of them there. And uh, then it says, I've been able to find all these books except one you gave me as a gift on thriftbooks.com or so forth. I have not had to pay full price for them and so forth. Chris Earl, Old Monroe, Louisiana, he's going to be moving here. If you know anybody that's got a cheap room, he needs a place to begin to stay while he's here in Nashville. He wants to join the ministry, but he's got to go to work as soon as he gets here. He don't know exactly what he's going to do, but he he's started applying online. Uh, Quick note from Shirley Marshall. She writes to us all the time from Texas. Dear Pastor Jim, just a note to say I'm doing much better and want to thank you for sending your DVDs. I want to support your ministry. but can only do a little bit right now. I think that's Shirley from Texas. I'm listening to all the messages from 211 in, from 2011 in order and learning a lot as well as current ones. I have a question about music. I was raised a Presbyterian, but I got involved in charismatic and Baptist churches at about 18. I'm also a musician playing piano, flute, voice, and organ growing up. I didn't make a 
profession out of it, instead raising my children, being a homemaker full-time for 20 years. My husband left me about 19 years ago. He was a full-time charismatic pastor. Good, I'm glad he left you. You don't need to be married to a fool like that. Somebody lies. I've been single ever since and struggling to make it except for my dad, a retired physician who helps me with my basic necessities. The local Methodist church down the street has been paying me $50 a week to play hymns since last September, but I do not participate in their crackers, grape juice rituals. The pastor knows what I believe and I have given him several copies of your messages. I've collected hymnals from every church I've attended. I recently, recently purged my collection of charismatic worship. I hate that word worship when it comes to charismatic music. That's not worship. That's that's having fun and jumping up and down and dancing. Uh, the Methodist hymn is one of my favorites now as it contains a wide range from 15th century on. It is musically challenging as well. I do understand there are doctrinal errors, but the music is generally very uplifting. Here's an example of one uh, I like, Agape, Shirley Marshall. No, she's in Ridgeway, Virginia. That's another Sharon Marshall, I think, down in Texas. Uh, I'm not going to read that. It's a long song there. Let me just say this. There in Ephesians, the, f the fifth chapter, the Bible says we're to sing to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. The word spiritual is pneumatikos, P-N-E-U, M-A-T-I-K-O-S. It comes from the pneuma. Pneuma is the word breath. There's only one breath we're supposed to be breathing. That's spiritual. That's the Holy Spirit. And that word pneumatikos means non-carnal. I sang gospel music years ago. I don't even believe in the gospel music that I sang. I don't believe in getting up there and looking like you're in pain and going, Amen, Jesus. Don't believe in that. No more. Don't believe in gospel songs in general. Most of them have got error all through them. I don't believe in Bill Gaither's songs at all. He was a Nazarene or something like that, and he was always straddling the fence, and every song he wrote sounds vaguely like Pentecostalism. That's because all the gospel music is supported by the Pentecostals. Don't believe in gospel music i believe in the hymns i believe we need to make a choice in the hymns because that's what is good for us i i didn't like that when i was young i had to go through gospel music look at all the paganism in it and so forth all right that's enough of that uh, then i got a letter here from diane bureau Diane and her husband, they've been faithful givers and supporters here. Uh, Dear Jim, Mary, and all at Grace and Truth, I'd like to say thank you for your teachings. They have become even more valuable to me as I am growing and understanding the Bible. As being a first-time reader of this magnificent book, and I am reading really slow, three years now, I'm up to Psalms, and Jim, without your teaching, it would not make any sense at all i am reading and have been able to look up other verses and other books through my concordance that compare to each other i finally seems to be coming together i do now believe that i can hear only by the grace of god i know i have a long way to go but know that god's will is being done in my life even though i am sad many days me too i am also content so with that being said, I thank you very much. Both James and I are looking forward to see you all at the picnic in June. God willing, we'll be there. I would like to request, if I made two extra DVDs, 101 on hair and spiritual biology, number 1001, was fascinating, and it brought me to the light on some Roman Catholic doctrine 
uh, especially with the manger nativity. I plan on giving this info to my son and his wife, and they sort of listen, but don't uh, talk to them much. So I hope to bring it and watch with them when I visit them in Johnson City, Tennessee in May. And I, can't, I know I can't make them hear, but I can give them the tools, and if God wants them to hear and see, only he can do so. That's true. I also read the book by Charles Chinoquy, 50 Years in the Church of Rome, and also Smoke Screams by Jack Chick. The first made me just weep, and the second made me angry. It, is, it just confirms all that you teach on Roman Catholicism. It's amazing what Roman Catholics believe. I never knew half of the things, but just went along with it because that's what I was taught. Well, thank you again, Jim, for being a voice for us who can hear. I hope you are recovering from those blood clots. They're gone. Thank you. And just know that James and I pray for God's will for you and Mary and all the God's elect. Warm his thoughts, agape and phileo, Diane Bureau. Well, thank you, Diane. Y'all have been a blessing to us. I, I did a series on hair. What's amazing to me about hair, when the Beatles came out, they had these little bitty short, they called them putty ba pudding basin haircuts. But back then, men were getting sidewalls. All the white men were getting side shaved up on the side, up to the parting part, just zzz, like that. And if you wore hair touching your ears, uh, all the preachers saying, those Beatles wear their hair like a bunch of girls. <laughs> now, those pudding basin haircuts that they had, that's what the elementary school boys are wearing, except they come on down over their ears. It's funny what you think in different generations. Besides that, when they thought that was looking like a bunch of girls, that's the way they put it, girls, when they would do that, they didn't know that, and they'd get mad at people wearing beards. They didn't know in the first century all the Jews wore their hair long and they wore beards, all of them. If you could grow one, I couldn't grow a very good one. But it's just funny about how God changes with time whenever, well, God likes long hair now. You know, it's like, uh, well, no, I won't go into that. I got some more reading here. I'll just read a few of them. Uh, Chrome Samaj commented on your video, God does not love everybody. Chrome Samaj, God elect is God elect because God knows who's faithful. Well, he, nobody's faithful unless God puts faith in your heart. That doesn't mean that he doesn't love the faithless. Yes, it does. Or the unbeliever. Yes, it does. <laughs> Remember, God knows our beginning and our end because we ever existed. He knows the beginning from the end because he declared the end from the beginning and everything that's not done. He do not desire none of his creation to be separated from him. Well, then why did he say he made vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? God loves us so that he has given us all choices. He has not. He's hardened the heart of the vessels of wrath that were born to be taken and destroyed. He will... Never force us to love him. The only ones he'll make love him are the ones that he has grace upon, which means unmerited favor. I'm not reading any more what you're saying because you're just full of yourself. Uh, Paul Michael, Paul Ben Michael writes on the Easter message I did, Dearest Jim, I love it when you are standing against those abominable pagan practices but I need to test something you have said. Please bear with me because I'm just searching for the truth always. This week I have remembered Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Today is Saturday, 7, 4, uh, 18, Sabbath, and tomorrow is sun, Sunday and is the seventh day of the Feast also of the Sabbath. The Word has revealed to me in Acts 20 and 7 says, On the Sabbath, Miatan, Sabbath time, no, on the first day of the Sabbath. Some you need to understand. When it says first day of the Sabbath, second day of the Sabbath, everything was numbered from the Sabbath. Sunday was called the first day of the Sabbath. Monday was called the second day of the Sabbath. They were numbered that way. Now, you've missed it 
you've missed the whole point. And besides that, all the rituals are nailed to the cross. If you're going to keep Passover, you can't keep Passover without a Passover lamb, without a temple, and without some priest of God, and without particularly a high priest to offer it on an altar. Well, everything over here in the Old Testament was a shadow. Everything in the New is the very image. The very image, our heart is the, our heart is the, uh, Ark of the Covenant, because the law is now written on fleshy tables of our heart, what was written on tables of stone over there. All that in the Old Testament, the rituals, not the law, have been blotted out. Don't have time to go into that right now. I'm sorry I'm not going to read any more of your letter. You, There's a lot of things I teach that you don't... People write to me, they don't know anything about it. Here's another short one. No, I'm not going to read that. That's superstition. Uh, Jim, please do not read aloud. Okay, I won't. If you write these real long emails, I'm not going to read them in front of the class. I don't have time. Uh, somebody's asking questions. Uh, the witch of Endor being able to summon the spirit of the prophet Samuel. She didn't summon the spirit of the prophet Samuel. God did. Only God can raise the dead. That was not the witch of Endor. She took off running when she saw that God had raised Samuel from the dead to make him stand in front of Saul and tell Saul, you're going to die tomorrow and be with me because you have not been righteous. Can a person be possessed by evil spirit for another entity? No, you cannot be. I'm not going to read all that. Um, people are listening to the superstition of the world of the 2000s, of the 1900s, and after the year 2000. There's so much superstition going on out there. The evil is man's heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. It's not some spirit out there. It's you. But if God don't deal with your heart and crush you under his hand, isn't it amazing all these people that believe in spirits, they never say they have a problem with their own sin. Well, that's just an evil spirit that got me and made me kill that person. There's a big famous preacher in down here in Nashville, he's very famous. And uh, he murdered a woman down in Texas. And uh, before he started this big church here, and uh, he said, I was sick. What, it, what happened, this man owned a house down in Texas, and the house was across the street from him. And he had a bunch of paint in there that he'd been painting on it. And his mother came over to show this preacher down here. Well, he wasn't a pastor down here then. Showed him this house, and somehow he kicked over a bucket of paint, spilled all over his fancy boots, and uh, he got mad, screaming, picked up a knife and stabbed the woman and killed her. When he went to trial, one of the men on the jury went to church with his mother and father and he was a charismatic and he still is and they convinced the jury that he had a demon in him and he got by with murder and he'll tell you well that was a drug deal it wasn't a drug deal he killed a perfectly innocent woman and he's a big charismatic preacher down here I don't care if he hears me say that I'm just tired of these people that's a good way to make excuse for your sin, isn't it? Well, I had a demon at that day, and, and I need to be let off the hook. No. Now, let me give you our announcements. Let me get my gun here. Left one of my pistols at home. I figured all I needed was one tonight. All right, we are on the TV every night, 8.30 channel 49 on comcast if you got comcast turn us on and uh in fact we've got about 1500 messages on there you can go in there and watch these messages all day long and you won't ever get all the information off of them and uh 
we've uh, we're on the internet 24 hours a day around the clock all over the country all over the world on the internet grace and truth dot net so go on there and watch some of the dvds okay and uh, we support we got a bunch of needy people a bunch of poor people they're really having a hard time in life and every month this next week i will go to the bank and i'll get about 12 uh cashews check and mail them to these people and uh we, when I make this appeal, every day I go to the post office. I have a post office box. I open it. Whatever checks, whatever mail comes in, I sit and open them all. And then I take all the, make deposit on all the checks. Then I go through the checks and see what part of them people had allotted for the ministry what part was for the needy and what part was for the missions. And I put it in those respective accounts. I don't, I do not pilfer in the accounts. I don't ever touch that uh, mission account. I told Dee the other day, I said, that's up to you and Scott to spend that to the glory of God. And I'm not going to ask you what you do with it. It's your business. And I said, you, it's open for you to run that, that uh, ministry, that Spanish-speaking ministry, and they meet here every Tuesday night. Scott stands up here and preaches in Spanish all the things that I teach. And uh, more power to him. I'm going to stay behind them till it begins to grow. If I'm 90 years old and dying, that will be my last word. I won't stay behind it. And uh, people accuse me of stealing. I do not steal from the ministry or from the people or from the missions or from the poor. People do think that you're imbeciles. You won't accuse me of that. You're foolish. Now, if you want to give to the missions, make the check you make to Grace and Truth and put mission on the bottom. That's how I know it goes to them. And if you, or you can put it all in one, put tithe, whatever goes to the ministry, and then mission, and then put under that uh, needy. And you can put what's stipulated for where. All right. Don't forget, here in a couple of weeks, we got our annual picnic. Picnic. Are y'all coming to the picnic? You don't know? Is your mama going to make you stay at home? <laughs> She's going there. <laughs> you better come. We'll have fun. Right down here on Rockland Road, Rockland Recreation Center, about a mile and a half from the church, on the lake. Beautiful place. We'll be having a good time. All right. Well, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. And... Uh, Y'all be praying for the ministry. Glenn, won't you pray for me? For it, for it. Father, thank you for the words. Thank you for Pastor Jim. Thank you for the family of grace and truth. And we ask that you would just continue to help us die to ourselves and love our neighbors so that we can learn more about you, Father. Bless the word today. And, uh, Open our hearts so we can receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.